my channel, Treetop Flight, where I'm documenting the build of my RANS S21 outbound. This is my sixth video of the build, and it will be the first video covering my wings. I expect to have two videos on the wings when I'm done. I'm also going to do a separate video on the RANS pitot tube installation and the AeroSun LED wing landing lights. The wing is definitely more complicated than other parts up to now. I do express a little frustration in a few places, and the builder just has to get used to bouncing around the manuals looking for parts, as well as using multiple diagram pages at the same time to figure out what the manuals want you to do. I've spent 136 hours on my build up to the start of the wings, which does not include many hours on the internet researching and watching the Vans videos, other builder videos, as well as the EAA videos, and getting help from the RANS forums. All really good resources. Let's jump into the wings. I'm excited to get started on my wings. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is go through the uh, wing spar assembly, which is the first step. Get all the parts organized for this part of the wing build. What I did realize is that my wings box, which had all my parts in it, had parts for ailerons, flaps, and different parts of the wing assembly. So in going through to get the parts that I needed for the spar assembly, I started breaking the parts up into aileron and flaps and other sections so I don't have to keep going through uh, this big box again. But I did find, as typical with RANS, I found all my parts uh, checked off, made a pile of them over here. These are the parts that I'm going to need for the spar assembly. So I've got those organized and sorted, and I'll put everything else back. And then the first step is to clean and de-spar, uh, de-burr, de-spar, de-burr uh, the struts and the spar assembly. And we'll get that done and then start getting these parts together. A grease cutting detergent is recommended. And what you find on this uh, spar is there some leftover label and tape glue that's kind of on there and it really took some work to clean it up these are my these are my cleaning friends uh, distilled white vinegar and water works okay for cleaning a zep degreaser uh, it was okay but didn't get this was my true friend barkeepers friend this is kind of a stainless cleaner I've used it for different things this is what really worked to get everything off. Okay, this is take two on my frustration about the wing spar assembly. This one may be a little calmer than my last one and maybe the one I post. Number two says to Clico the wing tip rib to the tip of the forward wing spar. As I come over here to the parts for my spar assembly, a wing tip rib is not included. As I go ahead two sections, I find the wingtip rib two sections ahead. Um, so I went through in my parts and I did find my wingtip rib. And I'm assuming it needs to be installed now. Um, my comment earlier, and I'll say it more gently, Rands is very, very good about their, their instructions. But I did spend over an hour trying to figure out what they were asking me to do with parts that I didn't... I've got all my parts laid out and the wingtip rib parts weren't here and they weren't part of the manual. So I did figure it out. But for anyone else that's using this as a kind of help guide to their build, you got to dig out your wingtip rib from a future parts list and attach that now to your spar assembly. We'll keep moving. We'll keep moving. The next thing you're doing is you're attaching these doublers. They kind of go, there's the forward spar, the aft spar, the forward spar inside, forward spar outside, aft spar outside. You just have to kind of read the text and the diagrams to see whether they go inside or outside, and you just click them on. Okay, a quick update. They've got you riveting some of the doublers 
And then there's a, a list here that says, do not rivet yet. And in the instructions, they tell you to not rivet certain holes. So I've left Clecos in a lot of the doublers. You come down here and this one you leave riveted. You've got to drill out. Is it a three, three eighths? I think it's a three eighths hole. I've forgotten the measurement right now. Drill out a three eighths. Then you come over and you attach this end piece, but they tell you to leave it loose because it's uh, until you attach the wing and you are not going to drill out this number 11 hole until you attach the wing. And this is one of the areas I say do not clico or do not rivet yet. So we'll leave that open. Then from there, they start you having work on the crank assemblies. So you go through your boxes. You get a bell crank assembly inventory list. And you break out another set of parts, um, even as the wing sits kind of untouched. So we'll, we're jumping around a little bit, but I'm just following the order of the manual. You need to uh, press some bearings into the bell crank pulleys. In pressing them, they do recommend using a hair dryer. I've got a heat gun to heat up the, the pulley before pressing in the bearing. Uh, I did find that helped. I started to do it without the, the heating and it was going in kind of difficult. After heating it up, it went in fairly easily. So a little tip that they recommend and it works. A little correction to my last video. Uh, you've got to get this uh, bearing pushed down oh, an eighth of an inch because you've got this uh, retaining ring that you've got to slip inside. So I had it flush originally, which made it easy using the vise. But trying to get this thing in an eighth of an inch, I actually used another bearing to push in on top of the first bearing. And that seemed to work, but be careful you don't get the second bearing stuck in there. It's a delicate act, but it seemed to have worked. Okay, we've completed the aileron belt crank assemblies, which are here. There's two of them, obviously one for the left and one for the right. I think you just have to get used to jumping around in these guides and manuals. If you notice this page, you're moving along, you've got the bell crank assembly, you're moving the directions, then you come down to number six, and it says install the rod end for the aileron push-pull tubes as part of the manual drawing. Well, you look at the drawing, and it, nothing about the rod end of the push-pull tubes. This is the same issue as before. We well, jump ahead about four pages and three diagrams, and you find the rod end, and the rod end, uh, the assembly installations for the ailerons and you find the parts that you need and the diagrams you need and you grab these parts from the future package and you lay them out and you finish installing with these parts so again uh, I guess you just got to get used to reading ahead and if you don't see a part in your list just jump ahead a couple of diagrams and you're gonna find it um, I think they could be a lot clearer than, than this, but that's just my opinion. Got it. Got them together. Next time, it'll be a lot easier. The flap bell crank assembly goes together a lot like the aileron assembly. Uh, once you get used to pulling out a bunch of different diagrams, a bunch of different parts lists, some from ahead, some from what you're working on, and kind of figure out what goes where and follow the diagrams just like putting a puzzle together then they go together pretty easily they make sense just watch where you put your nuts and your washers your thin washers your thick washers your stainless steel washers um so they it's just following instructions and they go together pretty simply and on with the wing to prime or not to prime? That is the question. Priming kit built planes is probably one of the most talked about subjects on the builders forums. The next step is to attach the truss to the spar and we come over to the instructions and basically they say that in item three is this truss fittings and to find the truss fittings we actually move ahead a little bit to the G section of the parts and there's a truss diagram that's specific to assembling the truss so that's that's about eight pages up so you've got to move forward and grab that and then start putting the truss together based on these parts 
The next step is to attach this truss to the forward spar and you've got to reach your hand in here and they tell you to deburr this edge before you put your hand in and that makes a lot of sense. I put my hand in there once to clean out some of these rivets and left a piece of flesh on the forward spar so you definitely want to smooth that out and then I, I've seen others get smaller hands. I'm not sure my hand's going to get back there but I got to get back there with the wrench and hold the bolt on while I'm holding this truss in place and we'll see how that goes. The uh, truss is attached to the spar. I tell you to alternate the bolts and nuts on either side. Getting a hand in there and, and a wrench was a pain in the neck. It took me a while, but I got them tightened up. The uh, truss attachment is attached. And the next thing we do is we get all the ribs out. This is the left wing I'm working on. Get all the ribs out. We're going to use the fluting pliers and we're going to make sure they all sit flat. Some of them look pretty good. Others not so good. So we'll get the fluting pliers out and we'll get all the ribs laid out flat and start the assembly of the wing. Fluting ribs is actually an interesting process. Uh, I've covered it a little bit in one of my prior videos. Uh, but what you do is you lay your rib down. This one is pretty flat, but see how it's got a little bit off the table here? So by using a pair of fluting pliers, if I just crimp or flute in a couple areas, it tightens the aluminum. And as you see, it pulls the rib down. So now there's, there's literally no, it's a little flux here, so I'm going to tighten it a little bit here. And it pulls it down, and you don't have to give it much. And we're gonna come here, we're gonna. And what I found is you're better doing smaller flute crimps in more areas than lar one large flute crimp. The next step is to lay out your ribs. A quick note to builders, you will need two right-handed ribs for the left wing and then two left-handed ribs for the right wing. So I went through and fluted uh, all my lefts thinking that's all I needed for the left wing, but you do need a couple rights uh, in the layout. Number eight says to drill the aileron and flap hinges and hinge arms to 5 sixteenths. Well, that takes a little bit of research and hopefully I can save someone some time. Uh, you got to pull out a lot of pages. You got to go to the flap diagrams, the aileron di diagram, the frame assembly diagram, and you pull out all your different hinges and you've got a lot. You've got an aileron hinge arm, an aileron hinge, a flap hinge, a flap hinge arm, and a flap hinge arm root. And you check all the diagrams to make sure that the ends are supposed to be drilled out. And it, and it does uh, indicate they do. They're drilled out to 5 sixteenths at the end of each arm in order to take a 3 sixteenths bolt and shear nut and washer assembly. So that took me a while. But that's what I had to do to figure out to make sure I didn't want to start drilling holes in here if they weren't supposed to be bushings. But these are for the bushings. So, on to drilling. I've gotten a lot of work done since I've updated the video. Um, a lot of priming, rivets, stainless steel rivets getting primed, uh, external hardware getting primed. These are hinges, aileron hinges on the outside, flap hinges on the inside, bushings getting pressed into each of the, the hinges. You gotta look out for right and left orientation on the bushings, uh, riveted, arms to the ribs just starting now to rivet ribs to the spars um what else attach the, the truss uh the truss goes in with some bolts some spacers in here to to space correctly so the truss is attached uh what else some of this is left unriveted until the fuel tank goes in so we'll wait on that, a little priming again. Anything with external exposure hardware, I primed uh, with a zinc chromate primer and pulled out a lot of pages. I was tired of jumping around in my notebook, so I pulled out a lot of pages 
and just kept them there for reference on the table. Um, but so far I'm happy. I've got a, um, a technical counselor coming by on Monday to do kind of an inspection and review and guidance and I look forward to his comments. But we continue with riveting and um, yeah, continue riveting and then moving on to the next step. A little update on where, we, where I am right now. We've riveted the ribs to the spars using primed stainless steel rivets. I've talked about priming. Uh, the, the manual does ask that you leave pretty much the center holes out of riveting until a later, later time in the build. So I've left those Clico to remind me that there's no rivets in there. Uh, the next step was to attach the bell crank assemblies. You've got an aileron bell crank on the outer side of the wing. Flaps on the inside. These attach fairly straightforward with just hardware, nuts, bolts, washers, etc. Uh, you run the uh, aileron cable through the bell crank. Safety tie it. Uh, and this is not instructional vi video on safety wire ties. I've got my EA, uh, my uh, technical consultant coming on Monday. And uh, my buddy said safety ties was one of his one of his bugs, and he'll probably give me some training on that, which I'm looking forward to. My my inspiration for builders, uh, if, for the, for those of you watching different build videos, you'll know what that's all about. Uh, then we come down to the flap bell crank assembly. Again, uh, watch your bolts and washers placement. You've got some plastic shims that go inside. Um, I assume to prevent rubbing and corrosion. You run the aileron cable through the top of this uh, plastic mount. Uh, bell crank um, cable you uh, attach with a bolt. So you say at least 10 turns on there. I think I've got 18 turns to make sure it's on there correctly. Again, another safety tie down here um, uh, to this, this mounting bracket. And then you run these through the inboard side of the of the wing for attachment later. And now we're on to the pitot tube. I'm going to do a separate video on the RANS pitot tube. It's a fairly simple pitot tube, uh, and it does not give you angle of attack AOA, uh, and it doesn't give you heat. Uh, which for icing and flying in a type of cold weather moisture is a nice feature. And I noticed a lot of my builder friends have upgraded the pitot tube with either the Garmin or another brand, uh, which gives them a little more feature-oriented uh, tube. So I'm going to do a separate video on this as it doesn't apply to a lot of builders. I'm also going to include the AeroSun LED wing landing light installation in the same video as the pitot tube uh, again it's it's a buyer option and it doesn't apply to everybody and probably deserves its own standalone video an aircraft spruce that basically has a little pump i think it might be a adapted aquarium pump or something it doesn't take a, a very big pump to do this and then a, a jar that, that is filled with desiccant crystals and the, the pump pumps air through the jar. The desiccant dries it out and then the dried air it then gets plumbed into the engine. This is probably a good place to stop this video before it gets too long. Maybe I've already abused that, but uh, we'll start the second part of the wings video with the bottom skins. And remember, dream it and just build it.